direct online starter made simple. So there's the starter, you can buy one particular brand. On the side it will tell you what the current rating is and in horsepower what the kilowatt will be for each motor. So this will do a three phase nine kilowatt or a two and a half kilowatt single phase maximum motor current of 18 amps. So anything up to that size from this particular motor starts, which just is an on off. Take it off. What we've got inside is a contactor and the overload. So you would have to buy the overload separately for whatever motor you've got. On this particular one, it is 13 to 18 amps as an adjustable. You'd need to buy this because there's part of this, that is the stop button, red, and that there is the start button. So when you buy it, you just get this bit here. You buy the overload to suit the motor. As you can see just inside on the lid, there's your stop button. So it doesn't actually make contact with anything. And that's your start button, so they're just pressable buttons. All motors uh, require some sort of fuse protection, so let's do them as three phase. You will then put some means of isolation in. So what we've got on here, we have the fuses from your incoming supply for this circuit, an isolator, I put triple pole in this, and then we come into the motor itself. So from here on down, this is going to be the motor. So in there, we've got a contactor, and this is the contactor. You'll notice we've got three main poles, and there are three poles. One, two, three, one, two, three. So contactor comes through the other side and these S-shaped things, these are your overloads and so that's this bit here and then now at the other side of the overload it goes straight to your motor so direct through, so power supply comes in the top, your load side comes out the bottom. So what we need to do, we need to make it work, well this is a contact and how contactors work, these are linked together and they are electromechanical switches so they have a coil and they typically have labeling A1, A2 so if we energize this coil it will magnetize and close these contacts allowing power to come through providing obviously the isolator is on and the coil for these is built directly inside there and it will pull that down. So we need to make it turn on. So we need a start button. Well, as we know, the start buttons are green. So I'll do it green. And the start button is just a push to make. So these are normally open contacts. So this is a bit like your doorbell on your house. Uh, if you press this button, uh, or you press the button on your doorbell, the bell will ring, take your finger off, it will come off. And that there is the start button. And as you can see, it's just a push to make, push to make switch only. Now the coil in here will either be uh, whatever voltage you wish it to be, so it'll either be 400 volts, as a standard what they tend to come with, or it can be 230 volts, or 110 volts, or 50 volts, or 24 volts, or whatever voltage they happen to make. But if it's standard, they probably come with a 400, you would probably have to specify it for any other type of coil, or change it, which means taking all this apart, which is 
can be quite tricky with all the springs in there, but it's doable. So that needs to be powered up. So because we'll do it as a 400 volt coil, one will come out of there. And I'll just show you how this works at the moment. So 400 volts, it's going to be powered off of two of the phases internally. And that's what you can see coming out the back here. So if with the way I have it connected at the moment, if I press this start button, uh, power will run through, go through this, energise this coil, and those contacts will close and the motor will start providing. Obviously this is turned on. So I would sit and hold my finger on this, the motor would start. Problem is, if I now let go, the motor will stop. Great, if you want to employ someone to stand there holding a button all day, that will hold it and it will work. Um, but not the most practical solutions. So we need to do something else, and obviously that something else is this. So there's something else is a fourth contact, and you may notice on here, one, two, three, four, because we have this contact as well. So when this pulls down, all four of these pull in together. And how this one works it connects in parallel across there. So now when we press the start button, close this circuit, it energizes this, it pulls in all four contacts. This now, this fourth holding contact replaces your finger. So now when we let go, current will now flow through that fourth contact and away the thing will run and it will continue to run. And there we have it, it will continue to run. But how do we turn it off? Well, we've got an isolator, if we turn the isolator off, then power will drop out. This will be de energized, all of these will spring back because these are sprung loaded, and the motor would stop. But obviously, that isn't very effective either, so we need a stop button. The stop button comes as part of the overload, so it's that one there, which the red button on top will push on. And the stop button goes in here. And the stop button is a normally closed switch, so it's the opposite of a doorbell. So we have to press this and it will break the contact. So if you put one of these on your doorbell, uh, you would know there was someone at the door because the doorbell would stop ringing. Not that you want to do that, but if that's what you wanted to achieve, that's the type of switch you need to put in. So this is a push to break switch. So now when we press this button, the contacts will close as they're in this position at the moment. And then when you want to break them, you press this button.
Then when you release your finger, the stop button goes back to the normal position and the contacts all drop out and the motor stops running. So how does the overload work? Well the overloads are these things here. The overloads are bimetallic strips and when you pass current through a bimetallic strip, which are two dissimilar metals stuck together, one will expand more than the other. So when you pass current through them or around them, depending on how they've been made, they will bend. And when they bend, they will operate a switch. So the switch for that is internal within it, but it was fixed. It's basically here. And this is also a normally closed switch. So when the overloads overheat, they open this contact here again, breaking the contact, breaking the circuit around the start circuit and these contacts open. Now if you're doing AM2 or something, you will need to add uh, an extra start button maybe or in general life you might have to add remote start buttons. So you go off and buy another start button. Which again is a normally open. So if you want to add another start button basically what you need to do is you will connect off of these two terminals here. So they're all numbered, all the terminals are numbered and it says on there uh, 17 and 18. So most has wire instructions but you probably you won't be able to see it but in there it will say connect to 17 and 18. And we keep going and connect. So now if we press this start button, current will now flow through that direction, energise the coil, hold in the contacts, hold in contact, holds it on, by the time now you've let go. And basically you can have as many start buttons as you want, as long as you connect them all in parallel. You may buy the start button and a stop button together, so it'll have a stop button in it as well. So normally closed. And basically where the stop button tends to go is you'll need to remove a link within there, within the circuit. So we'll remove a link and what we'll do is we'll just remove this link here. On this particular brand it happens to say remove circuit conductor X. You should have to look at the diagram to remove circuit X. Basically when you come out of here. connect back in there. Now when you press the stop button you will break the circuit and the stop buttons then always connect in series with each other. If this was one complete module you wouldn't need four conductors, you'd have to have three conductors but you would have to remove that conductor there. So you put that one in and you're now just going to do a link across. And now you've only had to run three conductors out to your remote stop start. Okay, 
phase it was also said it on the side there can be used as a single phase well the what people can sometimes do is they just go right line neutral comes through so obviously one of these won't be fused if it's the neutral conductor so line and neutral come in and it would be very tempted just to go straight through and work however if you did that you wouldn't pick up this circuit here so you might need to adjust it and make it work or you made sure you went through on those two for your line neutral what you must do now though is change this coil to a 230 volt coil if that's going to work but the problem really is i mean we could like i say we could move this over and it would work the problem comes in these overloads these overloads are bimetallic strips they're all linked and if you only have two connected it means they rely on heat to bend them and because they're all linked this one here would have no current passing through it or around it at all so it would stay cold these two now would have to fight hard to bend that one and bear in mind to adjust it we apply tension using this so that's very crude but it will work and will protect the motor so in order for that to work properly we need to include this one if we didn't include it these would have to work much harder and what you set it to here wouldn't be accurate so you might set it to 10 but it might take 20 amps to go by then your motor might have burnt out so it's very simple so our neutral comes in and may well connect straight through doesn't matter which one but i'm sure the instrument manufacturer will probably give you guidance on what does what and this occurs so it till it comes out it links back over and connects back through so now when current comes through it passes through this one this overload back on itself to pick up the other one through the motor and then back through this provided we'll change that to a 230 volt coil all of this will continue to work 